Hey guys, Ivan here, and I'll start this video with something that definitely needs to be talked about. I didn't talk about it before, and I'm gonna try to be brief right now, because I didn't exactly break this news. It's been a while uh, since it happened. You guys know, Melissa Bumstead, uh, Chris Bumstead's sister, Ian Wallier's wife, got arrested uh, in the United States for receiving a package of gear from Canada. Obviously, she's not in custody. In that article that broke the news, uh, they said that she was arrested on 10th or 11th September and released the very same day. I don't know how will they proceed with this, but apparently she was arrested for that day. There were some rumors that Chris was also arrested, but that was obviously not true. Um, maybe it was, we don't know yet. They didn't really make a statement about it. Not Melissa, not Ian. Chris only said nobody got arrested, but that's not true. They received that package. Why did they do that? Couldn't have they gotten something in the United States? They probably could. They know people over there. I guess they had a reliable source or they already bought stuff that was in Canada and somebody shipped it to them, which was definitely very, very stupid. I mean, shipping something overboard, you know, to United States, something like that, that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, could have that been gear for all three of them? And I decided to put it on Melissa's name because probably she has the least to lose. You know, Chris is defending champion in classic physique and Ian was seventh last year in open bodybuilding and Melissa hasn't been competing for about three years. Now she's making a comeback, so she has the least to lose if she gets caught, but apparently uh, she, she got arrested, so this certainly has affected Ian and Chris. Will it affect their physiques? Probably a little, probably at least a little. I don't know to what extent, hopefully they will manage this stress properly. Anyways, this is Melissa right now, she's making a comeback, as I said, in figure. Uh, she took some time off, she did breast implants in the meantime, and now she's prepping. She looks amazing, she looks big. It's hard for me to believe that she's only on like uh, 10 milligrams of um, Anovar, that's what Ian says. It's, it's really hard for me to believe that, I think she did lose a little bit of, of femininity, she kind of got a little masculine, uh, in that uh, neck, jaw area, she got a little bit too too muscular in that, in that, in that part of the body, which is not common, uh, <laughs> which doesn't happen with women naturally, never, so I'm sure she's using a little bit more than what they say. Uh, she has big arms, surprisingly, she has same insertions like Chris, but her arms are actually pretty huge, as you can see. So if we found out what was exactly the content of that package, we probably would know what she is taking, or if there is too much stuff, then we would find out what Chris and Ian are taking, and also we would find out that they would actually be okay with letting her take the risk of getting arrested for them. I don't know, I think it was really stupid that it did this, I'm sure they could have found a good source from like Matt Jensen or somebody else in the United States, they know everybody over there, they risked it, they did something really freaking stupid and uh, this is the outcome, so that's just my take on this situation guys, let's go with the next story. Alright, next we have Mikhail Krizo, this absolute beast, this, this freak of nature, who I believe is wasting his talent staying in IBB Elite Pro. Now, he doesn't really have a competition in that federation, and I think that's why he's not really pushing his body to the max. Here, he looks absolutely ridiculous, like a freaking Greek god on, on gear, you know. So, he, he looks amazing, these, these aesthetics are just phenomenal and the majority of the muscle the shape the muscle bellies i mean the small waist the, the completeness the big arms the legs the chest the back ah i can talk about his physique for days i'm so blown away with it but i think his conditioning could be far better and i think he could push his body way more than he is because he doesn't need to he can come like this and nail every show in, in europe in ibb elite but if he actually pushed his body to its absolute limits, I think this is maybe him at like 60% of his maximum potential. I think there is so much more room, and also him being about 30, there is a lot of years, the best years are ahead of him. You know, in bodybuilding, in open bodybuilding, you don't really flourish until you're like 33, up until 40. I think those are the golden years for a bodybuilder. You guys know that Sean Roden won his Mr. Olympia at 43, Ronnie was dominating dur during those years, you know, uh, mid to late 30s, early 40s, 
you know, usually bodybuilders who actually keep it safe, who keep it consistent, they peak in those years. That's when the maturity comes in. That's when they are at their biggest. It takes time, you know. Yeah, maybe his, maybe their natural testosterone levels are lower at that at that part of their lives. But does it matter? Hell no. And, you know, it takes time. You can't really become a super freak in 10 years. There are people who can, sure, but still it requires more for that muscle maturity. So I'm telling you, this guy has so much more room to grow, to mature, and if he really wanted to, to push his body to its absolute limits, he needs more challenge, he needs more rivals, he needs more competition. IABB Elite Pro is, is too easy for him, you know, he, he basically won that game. Now it is time for the new division, for the new federation, for a new challenge in life. Michal Krizo, come on, man! Everybody is calling you. Isn't that like the goal of every European bodybuilder? I mean, a lot of us are actually trying to move from the IBB European IBB to the MPC and to do well. But if you get to that level, that you are basically the best in IBB Elite Pro, and Americans actually want you to go over there and try yourself out. That's when you do it. I'm sure he has a lot of sponsors. He's making a lot of money. But come on. I know you're passionate about it. Do it, man. Make that step. Go to the IABB Pro League, to the MPC, and show us how good you actually can be. By the way, yeah, this is one day out of Arnold Classic, Spain, Europe. So again, he could be sharper, but he doesn't need to be because he will win nonetheless. This is how conditioned and matured and big and round and massive he would have to be if he competed in the America, in the American Arnold Classic, Ohio. This is Steve Kuklo. Boom! Look at his physique right now. This is an, at one week out. So he's surely depleted at this point. And look at the striations. Look at the fullness. Look at the, the roundness, the completeness, the muscularity. He's looking absolutely insane at this point. Can he actually win the Arnold Classic? Sure, sure he can. I wouldn't be too surprised. I have him in second, but can he beat William Bonek? Look, Steve Kuklo has an entirely different type of a physique. From, from William Bonek, he differs in so many ways. So Steve is tall and wide, uh, William is short and blocky, and uh, Steve has like wide shoulders, so William has uh, narrow shoulders. I mean, you name it, like, it's completely different kind of physique, they're not similar at all. But, looking at him right now, I mean, in my prediction video, I have Steve in second. And when I saw William Bonac in that guest posing, it made me certain that uh, William Bonac is going to win, as I said in my prediction. So, he, you know, he's the, the, the favorite, he won it the last two times, actually, the, he won it two times, he won it last year. And he's a defending champ, basically. So, of course, he has an advantage. Not in the terms of judging. I think if uh, if somebody wins, if somebody beats him, they will win. It's not like Mr. Olympia. You don't really have a reigning champ. You know, at Mr. Olympia, if you are a reigning champ, Mr. Olympia is supposed to be a legacy. Arnold Classic, every show is for itself. So, the best man will win. Even if it is very, very close between Bonek and Steve, uh, whoever is better is going to win. If Steve edges him out in like a couple of percents, I think uh, Steve will win. Can he do it though? I don't think it's impossible. And judging based on this photo right here, I told you guys in that prediction video, I think he will push the conditioning to its absolute limits because this is his final, the only chance to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. He lost to Ian Valier in his own hometown, you know, Texas. He is from Texas, he lost over there, he was prepping for God knows how long, and now just to, to do it, to, to be second against somebody who is basically a newcomer, up-and-coming bodybuilder, Ian Wallier, and not go to the Mr. Olympia, that would be rather disappointing and, dare I say, humiliating in a way. So I think Steve will give it his best, and judging based on this photo, he's doing exactly that. Can he win the Arnold Classic? It is very possible. Alright, then we also have a physique update of Brandon Curry. Did you guys miss this one? It's in a video, actually. He's doing some bicep curls, and right there in the middle of the video, he shows this photo, this physique update. So this is Brandon Curry right now. How do I feel about his physique at this point? Well, he's holding on to a lot of fullness. He also talks about him trying to remain full during the workout. He gets depleted very easily. 
But what I noticed, uh, the first thing that I noticed in this photo was uh, the legs, especially the hamstrings. The hamstring drop seems bigger, and that's kind of a part of his physique that is also not very good. I mean, the, his entire legs, glutes, hamstrings, and quads are pretty weak for him. But I think his quads are way more stubborn. And I don't like the way he's training them too. You can watch his videos, he's doing like quarter reps. I don't think that's gonna get him big legs. But uh, the hamstrings, they are responding a little bit better, apparently, or he is posing better. Uh, as far as the shoulders, the upper body, he does seem bigger and fuller. There is still time for him to actually get flat and small. Will he do that? Well, as I said before, I think he's going to play the fullness game this year. And I don't think he ever looked this big at like two weeks, three weeks out of Mr. Olympia. I don't think he ever had this kind of fullness, this kind of size. So I think it's going to be a different package. And you guys know that Brandon improves every year. So I'm sure he's going to be better in some body parts. I think he's going to be more mature. I think he's going to be like more, more detailed in certain areas with added size and more fullness. And is that going to be enough to win the Mr. Olympia again? Can he reclaim that title? Can he take it away from Big Ramy? It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Big Ramy is dangerous these days. So it's going to be very tough. But it's not impossible. Whatever you guys think though, tell me in the comment section down below. This is gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much guys for all the support, for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. And for more bodybuilding content, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys once again. All the best and bye bye.